And welcome back. Well, do you want to move or perhaps someone you love has to relocate because their needs changed? AARP has created a tool that ranks neighborhoods on their livability. Sam Wilson is the Wisconsin State Director for AARP with more on what factors determine a livability index and how you can best plan for the future. Good to have you here. It's great to be back. Thanks for being here. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about this livability index. Yeah. I love the idea of it because mm -hmm. I often think you can find a place that you like, but it's really difficult to then know how the neighborhood is and that's really what this gives you a clue into correct? it does and the big part about the livability index is we want to build neighborhoods that people can live in throughout the age spectrum so a livable community isn't just good if it's good for older adults mm -hmm. it's got to be good from sort of birth to the end of life and so what the measure what the index does is measure about 40 different metrics it could be anything from transportation to access to open space to access to jobs and it combines all of those and many of those metrics you can find one at a time by going all over the internet, but right. this actually consolidates all of that data. So you put in your address, poof, out comes a score, and then you can see all the different areas where you score highly and where you might need uh, some opportunity for improvement. This is what the website looks like, and we're going to type in, I believe, Shorewood here and just kind of get an idea. Now, this is ranked livability on a scale from 0 to 100. Yep. So the score you want is close to 100, well, as close as you can get? There's no such thing as a perfect livable community. Good to know. So when people look at their score, sometimes they'll panic. They'll be like, oh, my gosh, I'm 65, right, is what, you're, yeah, what we're seeing here. Yeah, how does that rank? The highest communities that we see around the country are about 78. That's about okay. as high as you can get when you figure out all so four. So 65 is a six, great score. 65 is a really good score. And so when you're looking at that, we've punched in Shorewood mm -hmm. as a community. So you're seeing a community score. You can go down even farther. So if you had your home address in Shorewood, mm -hmm. you'd then pun punch in your actual home address and it will give you a neighborhood score because a lot of people like to know, well, my community's pretty big and it has a lot of different parts to it. How's my own backyard look? And then you'll get an individualized score. So a lot of people will have fun. They'll say, you know, my sister lives in, you know, Brookfield and yeah. I'm in Shorewood and let's see who's neighborhood is more <laughs> livable right and so and again there's no such thing as a perfectly livable community yeah. it's just what you prioritize how does it help communities and residents plan for the future because this is something that's also affecting policymakers it really is and it's intended for two audiences mm -hmm. one is the individual so as was noted whether you're a new family moving into a community or you've been in a community a long time but you're looking to transition the type of housing you're living in it's good for those folks it's also good for elected officials and opinion leaders who want to say okay okay, we love our community, but mm -hmm. what are some things that we can improve upon? So if you use this tool, you could say, you know, we're really good at providing jobs. We're really good at providing transportation, but we don't have a really good mix of housing for people, whether they're high income, low income, middle income. Yes. Maybe we need to do a little bit, little bit better on our health score. So mm -hmm. we need to have a, maybe a physical activity program in our community to decrease obesity and some other risk factors. So yeah. it really, you know, you can't tackle a lot of these things all seven at one time. And there's seven different large categories. So you might pick as a community, you know, a particular, let's say transportation, say we're really going to focus on transportation for the next three to five years mm -hmm. and bump up that score. Well, I like that because it seems to create an accountability and mm -hmm. a responsibility to the community and the neighborhood to make it better yeah. for all the generations, as you mentioned. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about the factors. You've yep. kind of said a few, you know, that help determine why one community is more livable than the other. Right. But break it down a little bit further because different yep. people have different needs. That's exactly right. So uh, as you age and at different stages of life, you're going to emphasize different things. Mm -hmm. So what we may see as sort of economic opportunity is one of the measures. And so it's your access to different types of jobs within your community. That may be really important for somebody who's in their 20s, 30s, yes. and 40s. Um, if you're aging, you may want to find, um, do they have access to good healthcare systems? Do we have access to good transportation systems? So those are really important. We also measure the environment. You know, a lot of people, you, you sort of, as second nature, assume that you've got clean water and clean air and those types of things. Well, this pulls in some national data to ensure that the neighborhood you live in doesn't have any hidden pollutants uh, that may affect your environment as well. Well, that kind of gets me to that question. Where, where does the information compiled 
for the index come from? Some of it's national then. Yeah, it is. And so what we've done is we've, we have a, a technical assistance team of experts from around the country that AERP has pulled together uh, to advise us on what are truly the good metrics that would reflect a livable community. Then we also went out and we surveyed about 4,500 older adults and said, okay, tell us what your livable community might look like. And so when you add up the raw statistics, you add up people's opinions, you then come to this um, sort of an algorithm score. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's how we get to 65s in Shorewood or wherever else we may be measuring. Yeah, okay, so the seven categories are housing, neighborhood transportation, environment, or sorry, neighborhood transportation, those are two different ones, environment, mm -hmm. health, engagement, and opportunity. Yeah. And I think, uh, can people, when they go on and they put in their um, address, are they able to see each of those categories that's and how they rank? Exactly, and that's the I best part. That. So all seven categories will have its own individual score, which will give you a composite score. So we saw that big number, 65. Yeah. Well, that's just a composite of seven individual scores. Then if you're really sort of nerding out on this stuff and you want to see the details, <laughs> I'm geeking a little. you're geeking out a little bit. So, so then in each one of those seven categories, you can pop those open and there's individual measures. So Love it's like, it. how far from a grocery store are you? How far from a park are you? And it'll give individual scores based on that too. So there's a lot of power in that tool um, if, if people want to use it. Well, here's how you use it. You go to the website, livabilityindex.aarp. Dot org and do as Sam says, put in your address, break it down, geek out a little bit. Yeah. Love it. I'm a Shorewood girl, so you just made my day. And it's super easy to use, right? I mean, yeah. it's you just putting in an address, hitting uh, enter, and it gives you all there the you information. Go. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, thanks for having us. Appreciate it.